You want to make a Mac app, but you don't know how to start? I really like macOS. I personally started with iOS development, but recently I got really into Mac development, especially since SwiftUI makes it very accessible for most people. If you already know SwiftUI, this is going to make the transitions quite easy, as long as you know some of the tricks, which I will show you today. If you never have done any development for an Apple platform, I would recommend you need to first get Xcode. This is the software, the IDE that you need. I will link a video where you can get Xcode. You need to go into Swift, the programming language. There's also a lot of material for Objective-C. This is the older version, especially if you want to go deeper and really fine tune your apps with AppKit. But for beginners, I wouldn't recommend this. And also it takes a lot more time to learn and make apps with this. So once you have Xcode, some fundamentals for Swift, you can then learn about Swift UI. For this tutorial, I will assume some Swift UI. By the end of this tutorial, we will have this small demo project, which is a task manager. macOS has a lot of apps if you want to make a native macOS app. Most of them are something to do with productivity. For example, here I'm making a task manager. I'm going to go rather quickly for the data setup and setting up the views because I want to more focus on the specifics for macOS to give you a taste of what's possible and you have some ideas where to look for. Now with macOS, you typically have a sidebar with a detail or multiple columns here. This is a specific view, which is navigation split view that we are going to use for this. I added here three groups of showing all the done task and the upcoming task. Then as a test, I added here also the possibility to add lists or groups because this is a little bit more data handling included. I'm going to make this very simple and only for the all section, you're going to be able to change this to check here the task is done. You can also change this here. Then some of the more specifics for macOS is for example, keyboard shortcuts. I added here one for the new lists. So if I press comment A, you see, I add your new list, just add it something, then something like right click for deleting or duplicating or renaming actions. This is a lot like with menus, drop down menus or pop ups with this kind of keyboards. A lot of the stuff is either in the toolbar. So here I added a plus button to create a new task and the search bar. For example, I can look for anything with the word crazy involved. And then I close this and I see all of them again. There's a lot of advanced search features, which I will not touch in this tutorial. I will put a lot of the other tutorials in the description because I don't want to overwhelm you with all of the features at once, but you get an idea where to add and what to look for. Other things that you might be interested in here, adding menus. For example, in this case, I just added here a new menu for tasks and the button, I didn't connect the button to this. This is a little bit more tricky with Swift UI, but they added some newer things which make it actually work now. I did add a second type of window here with a dummy text for now. You can also use right click to open new window. With macOS 13, they improved this quite a lot. So you can now have programmatically open new windows fairly easy. And then something that every Mac app should have is a settings window. So this is when you go under your name, under settings, you open this. I didn't connect anything. One thing you might want to connect is the possibility to add a menu bar. So I just added here a very plain one. More interesting is for example here, this is from one of the task manager that I downloaded tick tick and you see you have here all recent ones directly accessible super useful other things might be adding widgets i don't persist any of the data so this is really just dummy data but in a future video i'm going to add data persistent and we're using core data this is just useful because in this case especially with this advanced searching if you want to add tags filtering by dates all of this is very nice with core data connecting things additionally if you use core data together with iCloud Sync, you can allow the user to sync their data between different devices. 
as long as you stay in the Apple uh, ecosystem, a lot of users probably are either or. I don't know if there's a lot of Android and Mac users simply because they made the ecosystem connected. Okay, now that you have a taste of what macOS app you're going to build, let's start coding and create a new project. And I'm going to use here the macOS project template for app. If you know you also want to have a companion iOS, iPadOS app, you might as well choose your multi-platform. This is also a very good idea to choose this if you want to later add subscriptions, universal subscriptions, because then you can have a subscription that is shared between iOS and macOS. I'm just going to go here for macOS to make it a little bit easier. I'm naming this here task manager. The interface is Swift UI language is Swift. I don't use any storage. Now, if you want to run this on the Mac, you need to have actually a developer account connected. So going to the app, target task manager under sign in and capabilities here, you need to have a team used. Otherwise you won't be able to build on macOS, but this can be a free developer account. So just create one if you don't have one already. Now I will start to create some data to show. And the first step, then we create the views and then I will connect it in the app. So we see more Mac specific a little bit later. If you don't want to go through the setup phase of the models, you can just go uh, in the link in the description and download the project. Okay, so I am going to create a new group for model and the two model files that I need to handle my data is one um, type is for the actual task. So this is a struct identifiable, which means I need to have an ID. Let ID is UUID. Then I need to have a title. So what are we showing? What do we have to do? This is a string uh, and I should change this to a var because uh, the user might want to change the title. Then a var for is completed. This is a bool. Then the due date, date until we have to finish our task of type date. And you can also add more information for this task. For example, a details description. This is string, maybe even optional. Then let's just create an init. I already created here this default value of nil for the details. And the completed is completed. I want to have a default of false because I guess if you create a new a task, it's not completed. Okay. Then to work with the previews in Swift UI, I'm going to create some static some dummy data to just show in our app. So these are static functions. One, for example, where we create only one task instance. Title is by milk. Then the due date, I'm just going to show you shortly to use the calendar current instant. If you want to create a date that is in the future, not just the current date date by adding two and I want to add a, okay, so to date, which is the current date. So I'm adding to the current date. So this is a new instance to the date component. And this is, I need to force unwrap this. I need to handle this and I'm using your force unwrap this because this is anyway only for my dummy data. So this creates me a date that is two days in the future. Then I am just going to create a examples static function that creates me a task array. This is for the list to show something there. Before I do this, I'm also adding here a default for my due date. And I also added a couple that have a is completed to true. So we have some variations. Okay, this is the first model file. Then I'm creating a second one for task group. Again, a struct task group identifiable. ID is a UUID. This again has a title of type string. You can also add something like creation date. Uh, this is more interesting for sorting. So maybe I should not actually need to, I wouldn't actually need to use this here. Oh, the title should be a bar. Then uh, the main thing is that the task group has some tasks connected. So the it has a property tasks of array of tasks. Let's write an init. And the creation date is the current date. And actually, I don't want to pass this here. I am simply setting this in initializer. And I'm also adding here a default value of an empty array for tasks. Okay, let's do the same and create static 
functions for one example instance of my task group and then a second one for examples which is an array of task group so in this case i create three tasks then an instance of a, a group and then i just set this three tasks to the groups tasks and i return this group then for the array i'm just going to the first one is the group that we just created and then i'm creating a new one with new list and i return this as an array and then the last thing i actually wanted to do is for my sidebar i have different sections that i want to sh let the user select and for this i use an enum so this is a new file swift file task section so enum task selection identifiable so i have three cases the all the done and the upcoming and then a case with a specific list okay now i need to it complains about my id i return here a string this is a little bit more complicated because i choose here this type so switch self all done upcoming and then last case i use the uid string then i need to have some display names that i show on the sidebar so var display name string again a switch self so i have here all done upcoming and in this case i use the task groups title then i also need to have some icons so this is icon name string in this case i show a star for all a check mark for done upcoming a calendar icon and for list it's the folder again i need to add a little bit more here for example i want to make this case iteratable this is again a little bit complicated because of the tasks so moving this down here a static var all cases and in this case i just return all done and upcoming and last, because I need to use this with the selections, it needs to be hashable, adding the protocol steps. So the left hand side's ID should be equal to the right hand side's ID. So if I compare two task selections, they're equal when the ID is the same. Maybe also moving this down. And it's complaining is still. So let's just make task group also hashable and task also hashable. Okay, now it's happy. I can now do the more interesting things and work on the views. I wanted to have a sidebar view. This is in this case a Swift UI view. Sidebar view. And then in the main content is a task. Let's start with a task list view. So the main thing I want to show here is a task. So I need to have an array of my data. Let tasks is an array of task. And also the title string. Now in my preview, for example, I want to show all. Now I use the tasks examples. So this is the array. The main content is a list with my tasks, task in. So here I would then show a text with the tasks title. This is the <laughs> default values that I created. Additionally to the text, I also want to show an icon of if it's a done task or not. Image from system name let's have a look and go in the xcode library and the icons for a circle so i can simply use a normal circle and we want to toggle and decide what to show depending on the tasks is completed question mark so if it's completed i want to show another icon then for the non-completed case where i show circle large circle dot fill dot circle now we have two different ones in here okay let's keep this for now and we're going to add the interactive uh, modifications later where you can the user can change the text and if it's boolean or not if it's completed or not going to the sidebar view so again i start here with the list and one thing i definitely want to show is the task selection all cases selection in i'm using a label because i we added already the information in the selections 
display name and the selections icon name. Okay, now we have here these three icons. If you want to see this more in the sidebar style, you can in the preview add a list style sidebar. When we put this together in the navigation split view, this would be applied automatically. The next thing I want to actually show here is the user created groups. So let user created groups, task group is an array of task group. Adding in this in the preview task group dot examples. So this is an array because now I have here another data for for each user created task groups group in. And let's also use a label with title and this is the groups title and the system name is folder. Now everything is shown together in one list. If you want to have sections with a title, this is for example, favorites. I am using the for each as the content of each of the section. And then another section for the user created ones, your groups. The next thing I want to actually do is select something here. <laughs> list has a selection property and I need to have a state property for this. A state private var selection task selection. For example, we can start with all cases. Then I use the selection property with a binding now here to my selection. This is not working because sometimes it doesn't recognize uh, the selection. So I need to add here a tag with the selection. See, now you can select something. I also have to do this with the second section. So this is a tag with my task selection, I use here a list type and use this group. I probably should not have made list and groups so interchangeable. Okay, now this is good. We can select something here and I want to now bring everything together in the content view with a navigation split view with sidebar in detail. So the sidebar is the sidebar view. And the detail is the task list view. As you see, I need to have here some data that I'm showing. I am going to create another property here for this user created groups. Page state private var user created. And again, I'm using here my dummy data. Then for my task list view, I need to change what I'm showing here, depending on what I actually selected in the sidebar view. In order to know this, I actually need to have the selection. So I need to pass this information one level higher, which means that it cannot be here a state. I have to change this binding to copy this because I need this anyway. So this becomes a binding var selection of type task selection, changing this in the preview constant of all going back to the content view. Now here I paste in my selection state that I get here. So binding selection. Now for the detail, it depends what I selected here. So I use a switch selection statement. If I have a list, I can use this and use the task groups title and the task groups tasks. Now I shall need to show you something for all done and upcoming. I don't really want to make this too complicated. So I'm going to trick the system and show some dummy data. So add state private var all tasks. And this is my examples array. So task list view all by showing all tasks. Then in the other two cases, I'm going to filter this. This is really just for our demo project to, and I don't want to make this too complicated. So I'm filtering this here by saying only if the task is completed and the upcoming, I'm also doing this filtering, but by saying it's not completed, let's test this. In the all case, I see everything done. I see the done ones because it's the, it has a dot and upcoming as the not done ones. And then going to personal, this is the one that <laughs> I create the other ones. And the new list doesn't have any. So this is looking somewhat working. We have some information showing. Let's now add a little bit more interaction. And the first one is here in my sidebar, I want to add a button where it says new list which means in my sidebar list view here, I need to add this on the bottom. If you add this in the list, 
it will be in the end of the list but if you add more groups then it just the user wants i want to make sure the user always sees it and not just when they're scrolling so i'm not adding this inside the list i'm using a trick to use the safe area insets dot safe area inset edge bottom on ios you have a two bar placement of bottom bar but on macOS we don't have this okay let's add a button action and label so it's down there and the label title and add group with a plus dot circle now macOS per default adds a border in the background to the button styles so you can over change this to by using a button style of borderless this is now gray and then i can change the foreground color to the accent color which i is using here the default one if you want to change this you can just go in the assets catalog choosing this and going for this kind of color if i look at the preview <laughs> in the content view you see it is very much on the bottom i'm going to use the pin function of the preview so this is this which means even if I move to the sidebar view, I still have this preview. You can always go back to just the sidebar. This is nicer to do. So I'm adding here padding and I actually want to move this to the leading edge. So I use an, a frame maximum width of infinity with an alignment of leading. Okay, now the placement is great. I have the nice styling. Uh, but what I actually want to do is do this properly so let's say i create here a new group when the user presses by creating a task group with type new group and then i need to attach this to the list that i'm showing here to the user created views user created view task groups append my new group this is complaining because i it's not mutating yeah and in order to make this mutating i need to again here use a binding so similar at binding var we have to change this in for all of the initializers so here i have to now use a constant for the binding creating a new binding and in the content view i also have to pass this as a binding now okay let's try i press here an add group and it is changed and we create here new groups now in order to actually modify them in the sidebar view here i need to instead of just showing a label i want to show a text field so i am creating a h stack with an image i still want to show the image a folder and then a text field new group with a binding to the groups title now this is going to cause problems because i don't have a year binding currently in this for each so we have to modify this by saying the for each works with a binding to users user created groups and then i get here the binding back okay go let's see okay sometimes the preview doesn't want to clean clean task okay now when i tap twice i can enter the text field and change the title it doesn't continuously change it here in the this preview i need to go to the content view uh, this is because I use the co constant. So I add a new group, changed. Now this is working properly. I am going to add here a keyboard shortcut in a little while <laughs> when we talk more specifically about the macOS stuff. Before that, I want to make this list here editable. And because in the content view, <laughs> I'm passing this here with this switch case and the selection, this is a little bit more complicated to do the filtering. So I'm going to create a second version of the task list view. I was thinking of using the new observation framework, but then again, if you run this on macOS, you need to have the newer macOS 14 installed. And I'm not sure if you have, it's probably safe. It was safer this way. And then since I'm going to in the future use core data, uh, this is going to be a lot easier. You will see. One of the reasons why core data is nice in this case. Okay, so this task list here is just going to be the static one. I am going to refactor and rename this to a static task list view. And then we're creating a new one. 
for task list view similar to before i'm going to copy the contents now one of the difference is that i want to change edit my task here so this needs to become an add binding var then we need to change this in here all constants for task now the first thing i want to be able to do is actually add here new tasks so i'm using the toolbar to add a button actually a label with the label being add new task and the icon is plus so per default it's showing it on the trailing side of the window the nice thing with xcode 15 that i'm using is that in the preview you now see the window so you directly see where the toolbar placement is thank you whoever implemented this that's really nice now the action I want to do is here tasks append creating a new task. So this is not working in the preview <laughs> because I again here I have a constant array so I can't modify this. In order to see this I need to use the task list view for my content view. Because of this filtering I can't use it for the other cases here but I can use it for the all case all and then using here binding to all tasks so going to if you change if you go now to the all selection we have this plus button and when you add here one it shows up later maybe you would need to do some programmatic scrolling otherwise the user doesn't see it or also some focus management which i'm not going to touch so you can make a text field active before we actually have this text field <laughs> this focus, I need to actually move from a la label here to a text. I want to actually modify whatever is in here. And because I also want to show you some other features, I'm going to use create a new sub view. This is new file task view. I want to modify something in here. So this needs to be again a binding var task. And then in the preview, let's create pass a constant from my example task. Okay, I start with an H stack. Basically, I want to modify what I already have here. So let's grab the, the image and the text. Adding in the preview of padding. Unfortunately, on macOS, you don't have a plus button to zoom in. I don't know why they didn't do that. But anyways, one thing I want to do is when the user taps on this icon, I want to toggle the state. So I use a tab on tab gesture performing. And what I want to do for this task, I'm going to change this completed property by simply toggling it. And the other thing is I'm changing the text to a text field, new task. And the binding is to the task's title. Now on macOS, the text field has a border on the background. You can change this by saying plain text field style. Okay, let's test this in the task list view. So I am going to replace this H tag with my task view for this task where I need a binding. Same thing as before, instead of when I used the for each with a binding, I'm just making passing here the binding, I return the binding. So going to the content view. Let's test this in the all section. I select one of these on the icon and then I go to the done section and these are still there. On iOS, you would need to actually increase the touch target to make sure that you can actually touch this. But you, as we have a mouse, we can make things very small. So I don't have to here make this icon super big. Okay, now let's see how everything works together <laughs> by actually building this project. So we have now a nice sidebar. For the all section, I can edit something. I can add a new task and change the name to by cat food, which I have to do today. This is the basics. You can also check this and run this on iOS. Okay, and now I have to add this target. Going to task manager, targets, general supported destinations. Then I add here one using the iPhone, enable. And now I can choose an iPhone target. I just realized that when you're choosing iOS list is going to complain because it doesn't want to use the task selection. That is because it needs to be an optional. So I had to make here my binding selection optional and also in my content view here, this also optional. 
When you launch the app like this, it, you will see first the uh, this list. Somehow, currently, my simulator gives me problems. <laughs> Usually, it would be the full height because I already I, because here I started with a selection of all. It will first show this view. On iOS, I probably don't want to show anything, so I would start with nil. No. That's why it has to be optional. Like this, we start with the first view. If I tap now on one of the sections, I go to the detail with showing all the tasks that are in this selection. Now I'm going to leave here this optional. This is one of the differences between macOS, where you want to have master and detail, and you can always show something in the detail. Whereas on iOS, you have the stacks. This is used instead. Because I'm going to continue working on the macOS version, I'm going to make it a little bit simpler and keep the all selection. But as you see, it's fairly easy to adapt for iOS. Okay, let's now continue implementing some of the interesting features. For example, search. I want to have here search text field in the toolbar. And you can do this with a searchable modifier. I'm going to attach this here to my sidebar. And I need to have here binding to a search text field. So again, I state private var search term string starting with an empty and now I can use this here. This is per default added to the um, toolbar on the trailing side. You can also modify this here with the additional par parameter of placement. For example, I can say sidebar and now it's moved to the sidebar. In this case, it makes more sense in the toolbar because I want to filter all my tasks. So I'm just going to remove this. You can also move the position of this outside of the navigation view. Searchable has a lot of advanced things like tokens and scope. I will link some resources for this in the description. I also have a tutorial for search. Now I am going to make it rather quickly and we're going to filter the all tasks. So depending on if I actually have a search text field, if my search term is empty, then I'm using the default selections that we had and else if I have something that I can filter with. I use something similar here with this filtering. Only in this case, I use the title contains my search term. Okay, let's try. If I select something with crazy, you see it searches. And if I clear my text field, it goes back to show all. So this is in this case. There's a lot of other filters you could apply. For example, instead of using here this done and upcoming as a sec separate section, you could also add here filter options for this. Uh, it's probably useful to have multiple filters included. Uh, for example, you can use tokens to search for multiple terms in the text. So something that contains crazy and that contains world, for example, then it would be this one. Although we have search on iOS, I think it's even more important on macOS where it's a productivity tool. You probably have a lot of data, notes. You really want to allow the user to search more fine-grained. Okay, now let's go to the more macOS specifics. For example, keyboard shortcuts. Here to my add group button in the sidebar, I can add a keyboard shortcut, for example, key constant A with command. This would be then the keyboard shortcut command A. I need to run this project now. You see my mouse is not close to this button. If I press command A, I created a new group here. Ideally, you would add this kind of keyboard shortcuts not directly here. On macOS, you would put it to one of these menu items. Currently, I don't have any menu item for adding a group. So let's have a look at how to add these menu items. Menu items depend on each of these windows. So I have to go to my main app. To this window group, you can attach a command modifier. So command menu. Commands menu means you're creating a new menu. Maybe I'm just going to use this in this case. So this would be task and adding a button. Title, this is add new group. Okay, let's see where this adds it. You can also add your multiple, for example, after addition. This is, for example, new items. Maybe I should rename this different, add new task. One is add new task. And what is... Okay, let's see where these two are added. So now I have here new menu with add new task. 
So this is the new command menu that I created. And the other one where I said new after replacement, you see now I have here add new group. This is the one that these are the two cases. Either you add it to a specific place already or you create a new menu. If you want to have your sub menus like autofill here, this, then you just use a Swift UI menu inside. Uh, you can create as many as you want to. If you want the keyboard shortcut showing here, like here undo, command Z, you need to append the keyboard shortcut to this menu item. So instead of adding it here to this button, I would need to add it here. Where did I add this? Here, this is this keyboard shortcut. Let's just use a different one of R. Need to be a little bit paying attention to this because there's already quite a few that are taken. So where did I add this here? To task, you see this keyboard shortcut coming up. How you connect this data from your menu to your main window, this is a little bit more complicated. I'm not going to go into detail now because this was one of the main issues with SwiftUI. The one that I think works very well is now the newer property vector, which is focused object. This is, for example, if you have a view model in one of your views, this one you can then directly access. So they added this for macOS 13. It wasn't there for the WWDC 2022. That's why you might not have heard of it, but it's very useful. The other one that you might want to look at is focused binding. This is a little bit tricky because sometimes you want to toggle if it's enabled or disabled. This works together with the modifier focus scene value. It's a little bit more complicated because you need to attach it to the right views. Additionally, you might want to use menus. So for example, in my sidebar view here to my folder, the ones that the user could create, I want to actually allow them to delete them. And you can use a context menu. You can also use a menu. This would be then a drop down menu or pop-ups. But context menu is just easier. This, uh, I generated here free texts. Let's try if you right click. Okay, let's just take out these menu items. Okay, now. You can right click on one of these elements and you see this drop down menu. They are looking disabled because I use your text and it automatically expects buttons. So if you move to a button of saying delete, destructive row, and then if you want to delete this group from this list, if let index is user created groups dot first where this id is equal to the groups id then i can remove from the user created groups at this index instead of directly deleting this you could also show alert or confirmation dialog this is first index Okay, let's try right clicking, delete. Uh, and again, it doesn't do it because I have here my static things. Just going to run this. Now I create a new group, right click, delete, and it deletes this. You can add more menus, context menus with multiple subdivisions. Sometimes macOS, I found that a lot of the problems I get is with multiple gestures. <laughs> Because now I have here text field selection. So sometimes it's just, especially here, it might not take my right click directly. So you need to be a little bit more aware of the competing gestures. If you want, you can also add this kind of context menus to, the, to hear my tasks, to delete them because I didn't actually add this. On iOS, you have swipe on delete. And we, this is what we don't have, or edit mode, we don't have this on macOS. And instead of swipe on delete you use kind of context menus one of the specifics for macOS if you are serious about making an app for macOS I would recommend going through the human interface guidelines for macOS then one of the newer things for macOS 14 that I now added is in the inspector area so this is for example here on Xcode I have here this inspector I should go here where we can see more details a lot of the a lot of the times you probably want to have this kind of inspector area. The cool thing is on macOS is this side in the detail view shown and on iOS this is a pop-up. 
which is probably the expected behavior. So let's quickly do this. And this inspector depends on the task that I have. So I'm going to use the task list view. Similar to all the other pop-ups or alerts, you use a modifier inspector. Now I'm using your macOS 14. If you are on a lower version, you probably leave this out because you can't test it. I need to have a constant saying if I present this inspector. I thought it just a nice addition, so that's why I'm showing you. At state private var inspector is shown. Bool. False. So this is inspector is shown. And then I need to actually have here something to draw in the inspector. Show some details. Since I have here this inspector, I need to actually toggle this inspector is shown property. And I'm going to use the toolbar. Now we can use your toolbar item group with placement item group. So I can place two of them in there. So the other one is inspector is shown toggling this show inspector. And then let's just check what I can do use. Is it something with sidebar? Yeah, something like one of these. Let's test this. I have here now this additional button. If I tap, you see it opens the sidebar. The first time it's having some issues with the animations. And it's also not ideally here with this. I would prefer to have this kind of line all the time. It's not sure how it's going to look as when it's released with macOS 14. So maybe this is changing a little bit. Okay, this is great. Now I have here a detail area, but I need to show something. And what I wanted to do, it's also not expendable, we need to talk about this. And what I wanted to do is I'm going to add here a button with more where we can show and hide this inspector in my task list here for each of these task views. I want to have a button saying more. Is it? Ah, this is because <laughs> here's my little more button. Now, what do I want to do? I need to have a way of passing this information one level up where I have the inspector. I tried to add, add this vector here, but then it was just weird. I need to pass the selected task up, similar to before. We also have a binding. I have now a selected task. This is optional because maybe I don't have anything selected. Fixing this in the preview, constant dot nil. When I press on this button, my selected task becomes this task. Then I go to task list where I need to have a property for selected task. This is a state private var because this view can own the state. I'm only managing from here where it's set in my task views and where it's shown here in my inspector. So this is a task optional starting with nil. Now I can pass this down to my views, selected task. And I finally have something here in my inspector to show if let selected task else. The else case is now nothing selected. Okay, maybe I should use a more nicer placeholder. And here I'm going to use the selected tasks title. Okay, now if I press more, you don't see anything because I need to actually show and hide this. This is another thing. Probably my sub view here also needs to change the inspector is shown property to make sure it's shown. So I go again to my task view. This is another binding var boolean in the preview constant false. And in this case, when I press on the more button, I can set show inspector is shown to true. I don't want to toggle this. I always want to make sure it's shown. If it's already shown, I don't really mind. So then back in my task view, I can now use this inspector is shown here. Now when I press on more, it opens the sidebar with this detail. Maybe we do a little bit more here. You can also maybe show the dates, the descriptions that I never did more details, subtasks. There's quite a lot of possibilities to do this. One thing that you might have already noticed is that I can't expand this. 
On macOS, you always have to add flexible fl frames. So I'm going to use a group so I can add this around everything. Frame, frame, min width of 100, maximum of infinity. Now you can, the user can extend this. Okay, I guess I have to run this. <laughs> You should add this kind of frames to the sidebar, to the windows, whatever you need. So if I expand the sidebar, this one works. Sometimes this is a bit strange. You need to add flexible frames around everything. Other things that I actually did not do is how do you set the window title? Let's talk a little bit about windows. For example, here, I want to change the title of my window to the title that I have here. And you use the navigation title. Let's try this. I am now in my selection of all and this title is set to all. If I go to the other ones, it goes to the task manager. This is the default name. Could also, because in these views, I actually did not use the title. Then, because I talked about windows, if you want to, for example, have different window types, you can create another window group. This is the title and ID is interesting if you want to do programmatically open something. For example, you want to open one of your tasks and, or one of your groups in a new window. You could use the ID would be then one of your information of what to show. I'm going, I'm making this very shortly now. Special window. Don't use here an ID. And I show here a text of special window. Now let's run this. Now, if you go under file, new. Previously, this was just new window. This is the main window, the one that you first that is first declared in your main app file now you see i have my new special window with here this information some things that you can do here is adding frames again for minimum width and maximum sometimes i should probably like 200 300 200 you can also set Something like window, the default window size, the default window position. For example, if you want to have it on the leading edge, always let's try. Now, if I go onto new special window, it actually adds it. Okay, I zoomed in a lot. I, it adds it on the leading edge, but you get the idea. It's a little bit more fine control of what's the sizes, position, the window style or the toolbar style. If you don't want to have the navigation title, for example, uh, for some of your detail views, you want to have an extended toolbar area. You can decide this or resizability of content minimum size, content size. All of these are quite new, I think for macOS 13. Last, if you want to open programmatically new window, I'm just going to add this somewhere. You have to use the environment for open window or open window. Okay, maybe I just do this here. Or you would then call open window with ID and value. Oh, yeah, okay, this is the one. The ID is the one where you use, where I said in the window group, the what kind of window type you want to open this with. And then you can also pass an additional value. For example, if you want to say which task you want to open or which task group you want to open, you would use this value type. Okay, going, just going to remove this. I'm going to show you this with the project that I actually uh, properly set this up. So here I have a free column navigation split view. And then if you right click here, you see I added the open a new window. And now this one is opened as a separate window. So this is another window type uh, where because I, it's a different window type, you can add here different toolbar items and also the menu is a little bit different. And as you see, I opened it at the trailing edge. So with a default size, you can so see you can do a lot of things with this. The window types I didn't actually talk about yet is the settings window and the menu bar. So for example, here I added a very plain menu type. And you can add here in the, in the settings the possibility to show this menu. So now it's gone, now it's shown. Similar to the other windows, you do this in the main app. For example, the settings is a settings group, text settings. Usually you would use your tab view uh, the forms. Then you can your menu bar extra. This is the title of menu. This is what's shown in these icons here. And then again, you can add here buttons do something amazing. Now for my app, I have here under task manager settings, 
a settings menu window. Okay, I did not add any flexible frames. <laughs> so this is the result. What happens if you don't add frames? So here, this is a frame infinity and max height infinity. Let's try. So you can at least expand this. Again, opening my settings. And now I can extend this. I probably should also set some minimum values. And then here I have this new menu item with my do something amazing button. Especially for productivity apps, you probably want to have this kind of menus. This is one menu from TikTok. This is another task manager. And this is a um, quick look at all the tasks that are inside, that are available in a rather small form factor. Like this, you can access it from anywhere within your workflow. Other things you can also do is adding widgets now for macOS 14 uh, on the home screen that are also interactable. So this is great. I did not look into this, but I have to. You can do stuff like on hover. When you hover over certain things, then you reveal them. For example, you can hide or more buttons when you hover over. You can help add help tips. So this is when you hover over something and it shows a little information like here, show library. Then there's a lot of working with the file system. This is a little bit tricky on macOS. Uh, depending on what the file format is. For example, you might want to drag in an image uh, that you want to ha use in your app or you want to export a document style, a document, all your lists, uh, the information. There's a lot of things for SwiftUI like file exporter, file importer modifiers, and also the newer share button, which directly also works nicely on iOS. I'm going to stop at this point. You build a macOS app with some default data but you already saw a lot of the more advanced features, how to implement this, what to look forward. For example, adding menus to keyboard shortcuts, right clicking on things, the settings window, which on iOS would be showing as a pop-up. If you're interested in going more into details of really implementing all of these things, I would recommend you to have a look at one of my courses, which is for core data and macOS. In this course, you will build a more complex app with core data. I find core data quite useful, especially for these productivity apps, because you it makes it easier to link things, to create very complex relationship, to do search for the storage solutions. I know there's Swift data, but I wouldn't be able to build all this functionality in with Swift data that I can do with core data. For example, here, something like sorting my notes by a certain status of archived draft or review. This kind of sorting fetch request is not possible, especially not with these nice animations and some of these filtering options. I can't just make this work here. For example, searching something with an attachment, which in this case is giving me all the nodes that have an image that start with, that have the term help in them. So that would be then only this one. This is an advanced filtering searching option, all this navigation stuff. And for this, I found core data just to be much more fun. So if you're interested, check out the course. Otherwise, I will have another tutorial where from the current project that we have with this, not to name data, we're going to uh, use core data in this case, and you will see how it will improve our data handling here in the content view where I struggle to pass all this data with the filtering and the bindings. Core data is a solution that you can use to store data on your device. Together with iCloud Sync, you can also allow the user to sync it between different devices. So go check that one out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. I really would appreciate this. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy coding.